This is for the hidden form of Rome. It's an interpretation of a passage in the Naturalis Historia, an encyclopedia covering a wider range of scientific and cultural topics of its time, written by Gaius Plinius Secundus Senior around AD 77-79. Professor Pier Maria Lugli, an Italian architect, proposed this interpretation in 1986, considering astronomical, archaeological, and astrological aspects. Plinio was not only an author and naturalist, but also a governor in various Roman provinces, and eventually the commander of the Roman fleet in the Tyrrhenian Sea. He witnessed the eruption of Mount Vesuvius and died while attempting to rescue people from Pompeia del Colano, threatened by their volcanic eruption driven also by his desire to study the phenomenon up close. Now, let's delve into the text where Plinio talks about measuring Rome's perimeter at the distance of the first mile from the center of Rome. Plinio states that in his time Rome was encompassed within a perimeter of 13,200 passes, a measurement larger than the circumference of the first mile, 11,000 passes, and even the Aurelian walls built two centuries later. One Roman passus is about 1.48 meters and 4.86. Lully proposed a solution to the enigma, suggesting that the perimeter of 13,200 passus was a measurement of a polygonal shape and not that of circumference of the first miles, 11,000 passus. The arithmetic measurement of this polygon is obtained by multiplying the measurement of the first miles circumference, 11,000 passus, by 1 and 120 resulting in 13,200. It is a star-shaped polygon symbolizing the sun, with eight vertices and eight inflections inscribed within the circumference of the first miles. It is formed by the intersection of three concentric triangles with the center in the Forum Pacis, Forum of the Peace. The Forum of Peace is one of the imperial forums of Rome, the third in chronological order after that of Caesar and that of Augustus, defined by Plinio in his Naturalis Historia, as one of the wonders of the world. It was conceived as another large square, partly paved and partly planted with greenery and fountains. The Forum was separated from the Forum Augustus and the Forum of Caesar by the Via dell'Argileto, which connected the Roman Forum with the Suburra. The Argileto Road in his last section was later transformed into the Forum of Nerva, also known as the Transitory Forum, because of its transit and connecting function. In a future video we will follow the ancient road from Porta Tiburtina in the Aurelian Walls until the Transitory Forum. For the purpose of this video we only focus on two parts of the Forum of Peace. 1. The four exedras of a rectangular plan, located on the eastern and western side, two on each side. Only one remains, the northeastern one. It has been preserved because it was incorporated into the base of the Torre dei Conti, built in the early 13th century by Pope Innocent III Conti, 1198-1216, for his family who had their residence in this area. The inside of the Exedra is visible in the basement of the tower. Here, according to Lully, is the circumference center of the first mile and so the geometric center of the hidden form of Rome. Two, the hole immediately to the right of the Temple of Peace, where the famous Forma Urbis Rome, the large plan of Rome, 18 per 13 meters, engraved on marble by the will and at the time of Emperor Septimius Severus, was affixed. At that time of Pope Felix IV, 526-530, the Basilica of Santi Cosma e Damiano was built in the hole next to this one and still exists. Of the hole incorporated into the church remains the 18 meter per 13 meter southwestern wall, visible to the outside between the church entrance and the remains of the Basilica of Massentius. The holes for the brackets that supported the marble slabs can be seen still on the wall. The fragments of the slabs, a total of 151 divided by 11 rows, were found starting in 1562 and are currently kept in the Museum of Roman Civilization. Moving on to Plinius' cryptic narration about the shape of Rome in 73 AD, it falls within a historical period between 380 BC construction of Serbian walls and 272 AD construction of Aurelian walls. The 6th century era lacks detailed documentation about the city's shapes, except for the former Urbis. 
The first hidden star-shaped form, the oldest one, at the time of Emperor Augustus, was formed by the first esoteric triangle ABC, with a perimeter of 9,166 passus, which, when multiplied by 1 and 120, from the 11,000 passus circumference, result in 11,000 passus. This triangle is inscribed within the circumference of the first miles and has vertices on Bay, Prenestre, and Lucus Fratum Arbalium directions. This triangle intersecting with another triangle with the vertices on Alcium Babiena, Monte Sacro, and Tellena. The resulting six vertex polygon has a perimeter of 12,100 passus, which is 11,000 passus of the circumference multiplied by 1 and 110. During the reign of Emperor Vespasiano, when Plino describes the altera form of the city, the triangle with vertices on Alcium, Montesagra and Tellena is replaced with two concentric triangles forming the eight vertex star. This is a possible solution to Plinio's enigma based on topographical correspondences with the ancient topography of Rome and the hypothesis that it was already outlined by Nero Emperor as an ideogrammatic model of his urban plan for the reconstruction of Rome after the famous fire of 65 AD. This star-shaped polygon represents an ideal and secret form of the city. Plinius provides cryptic clues that allow the identification of significant dates in the calendar and the history of Rome within this star figure. From the geometric center of the star in forum patches, the following originate. Geographical axes, which point towards location in the surrounding territory of Rome that played an important role in the ancient history of the city. Astronomical axes, which correspond to points on the horizon where the sun rises and sets through the year and coincide with the fundamental dates in the history of Rome, starting from the date of its foundation on April 21st. The star with eight vertices would have been used as a massive sundial with significant dates on the Roman calendar and history marked on it. The internal generatrices of the star figure also indicate the position of the main monuments of the city in the 738 and later. We can observe that the most significant monuments in the city were built along these lines, following a hidden magical pattern known to a selected group of elected individuals. For example, the Pantheon is located on the alignment of the sunset during the summer solstice, while the sacred area of Largo Argentina, the place where Caesar was assassinated, and the theater of Pompeo are aligned with the sunset of April 21st. This, along with many other archaeological correlations, confirm the hypothesis of the star figure as an ideogrammatic model of the city. This model would have regulated the position of the most important buildings in Rome and expressed the ideal form of the city. The reference to the sun is evident in the eight-pointed star, a reflected image of the sun in the Eternal Seed. Talking about Roman sun symbol, Nero Emperor, for example, portrayed himself as the god of the sun, Phoebus, crowned with rays in the Colossus, a colossal bronze statue inside of his Domus Aurea. The statue was later moved in front of the Flavian Amphitheatre, construction of which began with the first of the Flavian Emperors Vespasiano. It is hypothesized that the Flavian Amphitheatre took the name of Colosseum from the presence of the colossal statue. It can be assumed that it was precisely from this symbolic identification of Rome with the sun that the theory of the ideal city in the form of a star originated. This theory became the subject of extensive urban and formal research by the Italian architects of the Renaissance, who 1,500 years later, starting with the Filarete, designed dozens of ideal cities inspired by the works of Vitruvius, the Roman architect of the Augustan era and author of the famous treatise De Architettura. The ideal city became the theme of the entire Renaissance utopia. The Sideris Formum, star shape of the plan for Rome by Pope Sixtus V and his architect Domenico Fontana, and the City of the Sun by the philosopher Tommaso Campanella. Lully interpretations of Plinius' enigmatic and obscure writings offer a new perspective on the possible connections between the physical form of the city and its ideal, magical, hidden form, linked to its history and destiny. In the upcoming video, we will explore in detail the various monuments and places of the city, both from the ancient times and subsequent periods, in relation to the Altera Forma, its axis and alignments, and the physical paths of the city, with a particular focus on the road system of the two great hyperbolic shaped road system. But that's just another story we will talk about later. You will find a lot more of Rome on my channel as soon. So make sure you gotta check it out and make sure you subscribe.
I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like because it really helped me a lot of, to continue. And I'll see you very soon in another episode. Goodbye.